You guys probably remember those little rubber insulators or supports that were right here, remember? I said they were glued on. This is the rear brake line, by the way. The ABS rubber rear brake line. Okay, there's the uh, Union. So anyway, there was two places on this on this line that ran from from the master cylinder back to their to the rear brake caliper. And in two spots they had these little rubber supports and they were glued. They split, they they split off. I think I showed that in a previous video, but they split off. You have, you can take them off of there. But they were glued on there. And there was one right there too. So what I did is I stuck them in the vise. Right? I already took them off, but basically it was stuck in the vise like this. Okay. Put it in the vise. Okay. Clamp down on it. Let me back this out a little bit. Clamp down on it pretty hard. And then I pull it, kind of pull it apart with my hand. You could also use a pair of pliers. And you just pull back the rubber. Just don't just don't tear it, right? Just pull it back nice and easy until it peels away from the from the rubber hose. So just to show you how I finished up the top real quick, I went ahead and, and bolted in that empty line. There's no brake fluid in there. Remember I said I remounted it to its wire harness and wire loom down there? Well, I just remounted it to the pump. I'm just going to leave it like that. This way I know it's in there nice and steady. not going to be flopping around. I'll get a cup. I'll get, uh, looks like one, two, three stainless steel bolts. Put the... Um, Banjo washer underneath there and just tighten the stainless steel bolts in there just in case there's no really no brake fluid left in there But just in case if you're riding real hard you want you don't want any last little residual brake fluid splashing up You know splashing around if it's coming out of the pump so I'll just seal those off with some threaded tape and some stainless steel bolts and and be done with it So that part's all done. We're looking really good right there These are Galfer USA lines All right, so you can see the line right there, right? That's the banjo bolt end yeah, I already talked about how it's wrapped around the XO exhaust valve cable lines and runs down the swing arm, right? Okay, so obviously you're gonna take one of these banjo bolts. I reuse the banjo bolt, the stock banjo bolt. You could, because I prefer this size head better, but you can use the one that comes in the kit. They, they send them with a the kit. Now, just to show you, there's the banjo bolt head and there's a washer that goes underneath it, okay? The kit, the Galfer kit comes with washers. They're they're going to be, um, I think, copper or brass. I think they're brass. Okay, anyway, so you can see you put the banjo end in there. There's a washer underneath there first, okay? So you put the washer on top of the rear master cylinder. That's the first thing you put on there. Okay, so you're going to take one of these. You can put it right on the top of the master cylinder if you want, okay? Then you put your banjo, your end of your brake line on there, and then you take your banjo bolt, which has a washer on the top, right there, see it? Right up against the head, and push it through. Okay, so that's the order. And then you just screw it in by hand until it starts taking the thread. Okay, that's how simple that is, guys. Okay, that's it, guys. It's installed. We can go riding. <laughs> Only if it was so easy. Not. No, we're not ready to go riding yet. We don't have any front brake lines. Oh, that's right. We're going to need to put those on there. Right. We don't have a brake reservoir. Oh, that's right. We're going to put that on there. And we don't have our brakes. We don't have any brake lights. Uh, I guess there's still some work to be done here, huh? All right, anyway. <laughs> so, pretty simple stuff up to this point. We just got those hand tightened right on there. And uh, don't worry about at this point about finalizing the position of the uh, of where you want the brake lever and all that, that's gonna be one of the last things you do. Okay, just get it uh, mounted on there kind of snug and then we can move, you can always move it around afterwards once you get the brake lines and everything on there, brake lines bled and all that, then we'll, we'll move this around and get to where we want it. Okay, so I just put the master cylinder on there and I was just quick, quickly testing to see if the Suzuki brake reservoir, which is the one I got in my hand here, would hook up to the Brembo master cylinder. The bracket on the Suzuki OEM brake reservoir fits right there and it keeps it, 
Once you put the bolt in there, it keeps it from moving left or right. That little ridge. Right there. So that's nice. So I really wanted to reuse this bracket. Okay. And sure enough, the hose is really close to go to the Brembo Master Cylinder. One problem. The diameter of the OEM Suzuki hose, the size of that hole is too large for the brake fluid inlet on the Brembo Master Cylinder. The Brembo hose is a smaller hose than this one. Okay, but I would really like to use this bracket and mount it right here for the brake reservoir. So let's go over to the workbench and we'll see if we can make this happen. I don't know if I can, but we're going to try. Okay, so here's what I did, guys. I took the, this rubber hose from the Brembo kit, okay, which normally would go on here. It's smaller than, in diameter than that hose, obviously. You can see it's smaller, right? This is the, the Suzuki uh, brake reservoir. The one in the back is the Brembo. So I took the hose from the Brembo kit and sure enough, slid it over the top of the Suzuki um, brake reservoir um, outlet. Okay. And no problem. It's, it's fine. This end is still small and it's going to fit onto the Brembo master cylinder. No problem. Okay, well the clamp that Brembo gave me, two of them are in the kit, and there it is right there. Tried to slide it over that, even with a pair of pliers, fully opened, right? You see what I'm talking about? You take a pair of pliers, you pinch it, you try to forget about it. This is their hose and their master cylinder, and that clamp does not fit over that nozzle. I tried at least three or four times, and I mean I push, pushed on one side of the screwdriver, no doggone way. And far as I can tell, the two clamps that are in the kit are the same size. At least I think they are. Maybe I'm wrong, but now I got the damn hose all the way on there. Okay, well I got the hose all the way on there and that's not ideal. And I'm pretty sure these two hose clamps are the same size. The, the Suzuki one was too big for this side and this was too small for the... The Brembo clamp was too small for the Suzuki Master Cylinder, so I used the hose clamp that I had small one that I have in the garage. You can get these at automotive part. So guess what? I got a feeling I have to do the same thing down there. These clamps, as far as I can tell, they do not fit over the, <laughs> they don't fit over this master cylinder's inlet port. That, that ain't working. Would not go over the top of it. So I have to use another hose clamp down there, which I'm fine with that. Just wish I would have known that before I put it on there because now I gotta take it off the paint. I'm about to get it on and off. So you can see it's pretty sharp, right? Had to cut, had to cut just a little bit off. Okay, just a tiny amount had to be cut off. Otherwise, the hose was going to be like you know, crimped over when you put it up to the brake reservoir. Okay, so just get it when you get it on the bent workbench wherever you at. Just cut it, cut you know, it's not even what an inch. Looks like it's whatever, about an inch maybe at the most, but just cut. Cut less than you think and then come back and try. You may have to cut more, that's all. Okay, there it is, guys. You've got this Suzuki brake reservoir hooked up to the Brembo Master Cylinder. Okay. And on the mounting bolt for the Suzuki reservoir, which that's all Suzuki, all of this, um, I just put a little bit of Loctite So touch a Loctite on that bolt right there. Remember those little eight millimeter jobs? This threads right in there, guys. Just thread it right in there. And that little bracket right there, that bolt's gonna go through there. If I have to use a washer, I will. Okay, you guys remember from part one and the parts list and our part two, actually, yeah, I think it's part one. I talked about the parts in a part list. Remember that special banjo bolt, Brembo banjo bolt? Shorty, well this is it, This we're gonna use it now, okay? There it is in the, the bag, I'm taking it out of the bag. So just, I just thought of something that some people may wanna ask, it's, it's obvious that some people may not be to others. The Galfer kit, GP kit that we're looking at here, the top the top uh, line coming up to the master cylinder. The shortest line comes up to the master cylinder, guys. 
and the two longest lines go stay down there by the front wheel then go to the brake calipers on each side okay so if you're wondering which which one goes where the shorty line comes up so it's one line that's, that goes down and splits into two right it's all one all connected one piece you don't you don't have to do any connections for the lines themselves to each other follow me you don't have to worry not about your money people on the river they love to give well big wheels keep on turning proud mary keeps on burning rolling all right have a little fun here it's getting late the mosquitoes are biting me okay so we got the banjo bolt bolted into the bottom of the brembo master cylinder now the brembo master cylinder is not hooked up to the um to the clip on the, the handlebar yet but i just wanted to show you there it is that's the shorty bolt we just showed you the banjo bolt in there right zoom in there a little bit sir Bob. we haven't tightened it down yet it's just sitting there loose because we're gonna, still going to move some things around right all right guys i put a, uh, found some bolts at the local hardware store these are m10 by one and a quarter so 10 is the uh the metric size millimeters and one and a quarter is the type of thread okay so you want some really short ones i couldn't find the short ones at a hardware store you want maybe like 15 millimeters long okay which you may have to get those online like bolt.com or something or ebay might have them okay so i found long ones that are, that are the right size and the right threads unfortunately they were too long so what i'm doing is i cut them down the size okay off the end I'm about to do another one here okay I realize a lot of you guys don't have this kind of equipment grinder with a cutoff cutoff wheel that's how I'm doing it and it's working fine I hit it with a needle file a little bit to take the edge off of it and then it threaded into the into the pump um, like I said if you don't have this kind of equipment then get an M10 by one and a quarter by about half this length, about 15 millimeters probably. I think this is 30 millimeters. So you have to get a shorty. And I think bolt.com or some other places probably have it. Just look around. Right, so you can see that the line is routing down in front of the fork. Okay, comes down. This is on the uh, throttle side of the bike. Okay, and then this is a really important part. I want to show you this part. You gotta make sure you get this part right. See it? Now you see it, right? See how the elbows push up against that little black support? So that's how you do it. You gotta get the elbow to the to that side. It's a bit of a pain in the butt GP style, but that's the way it works right there, okay? And to be honest with you guys, I had to flip I had to flip the 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 left side brake line to the right and then back because I wasn't sure which one was working. The shorty goes the shortest line goes up to the to the master brake center, that part's easy. But knowing which side goes left or right, it's not always easy. They're supposed to mark them, but they didn't. They're supposed to have like a little, little, uh, a little like a little sticker on there that tells you left or right, but which is stupid too. Left right means what? Think about it. Left right, left right. What does that mean? Sitting on the bike or standing in front of the bike? <laughs> People crack me up in the automotive industry. We don't use left right. We use driver side, passenger side, throttle side, brakes. We talk like that. Okay. Over here, pretty easy. Okay, the uh, clutch side, shifter side of the bike, very easy. Just look at that. Just goes up against the stop. Again, the elbow is to the back, right? The elbow isn't coming from this side. The elbow's coming from that side. You follow me? That's the elbow right there. Okay, got it. This side's really easy. Okay, guys, this is one of the clips that goes on the uh, front brake line, the OEM brake line. You notice that that clip looks familiar, right? It holds the traction control wire there and it holds the brake line there. But these are too big for the Galfer lines. So you'll notice I drilled a little hole right here. Okay, just drill a little hole right through there. And I drilled it big enough for a, zip, a quarter inch zip tie to go through there. Okay, and I'll show you why. See the zip tie fits through there. Okay, so there's the hookup. I wire tied the traction control, wheelie control wire to the Galfer lines. Okay, remember that little hole I put in front of the clip? The drill? Zip tie goes right through it. Okay, so you can see what I did there. It's working pretty good. I'm gonna look for some clips that fit these Galfer lines and see if there's any out there. If there are, I'll replace this for now. I'm just gonna leave it like that. Check your clearance left to right, turn your wheel left and right. 
Okay. Make sure you turn your wheel all the way to the left. Check your line. Make sure it does not bound up. It's not too tight. This one's looking pretty good. Bring it all the way back to the right. Check it. Up there, I just zip tied the uh, the wheel control, track control line to the old mounting hole. See it right there? Right there, right? There's a zip tie right there. Okay, just zip tied it right on there, so that's good. Okay, so, so far this is looking really good. Okay, it's kind of a test fit because it's all going to have to come back off when I take these brake calipers off and to put brake pads on there, but I just want to test fit. Everything's looking good right now. Got to mount to that hole right there. There's a hole right there. Taking that black clip that's around the brake line right there and mount it to that hole. Remember we talked about having to get that little bolt, so I went to the store. That's the bolt that's going to go in that hole. Okay, and that bolt is a six millimeter by one and it's pretty short. Okay, it's a little shorty. That's what you're going to use to mount the brake line. All right, so we can see that it's brake lines mounted right there up against the uh, triple clamp, but lower triple clamp. See it right there? It's mounted right there. Yeah, you can turn to the right here. Yeah, it stays put right. Turn to the left, but honestly, once you get too far left, let me show you here. That's about as far left as you're going to want to turn it. Now, just let's take a look and see where we're at here. That's yeah, pretty far left. Not many people can turn the bike that far left, but all things being equal, I think what I would do differently here is get the same type of uh, clamp that goes around the brake line down there, but make it longer so that it's, when it's finally mounted, it's mounted, the whole intersection is mounted a little bit more towards the throttle side so that when you turn, you don't have it colliding with, right? It wants to collide right there. Just, I'm almost, almost at full stop, but not quite. So, I don't think it's a problem because I almost never turn that sharp, but, like I said, if you really want to be 100% correct, I would get a longer little clamp. You could probably even make one out of sheet metal, drill a hole in it, be done with it, and put a little rubber coating on it, a little rubber stopper on it. But yeah, all in all, I'm, I'm okay with this. I got everything hooked up over here. I think we're looking really good. All right, guys, at this point, I've taken the front brake caliper off on the throttle side of the motorcycle. So for those of you that are not really familiar about that process, there's two bolts okay, right there. And they come out of right near the rotor, okay, there and there, okay. So you'll notice right here it's got it sitting on top of a toolbox and a little piece of wood. And the brake line's still connected this way. I don't have to uh, disconnect the brake line. I'll do this a lot, just set them up like this and uh, flip it around. I took the old brake, old brake pads out. You know, I got to say that the Brembo brake pads are actually pretty good. They come standard on the bike with the Brembo uh, brake caliper. One of the things you're probably going to have to do is, let's see if I can, you'll notice that right here is a cylinder and there's one right there too, okay? So what I'll do is before I take out the, the old brake pads, before I take those out, so it'll be sitting there with the old brake pads, I'll put a screwdriver in there and just carefully push back the cylinders on both sides, okay? Now with brake fluid in your system, that may not be so easy and sometimes you gotta use, a, you gotta use what we call a clamp. But since this system is drained, uh, what I'll do is just crack the, the top up there, make sure there's no air being compressed in the system. Maybe give the handle a couple tweaks just to make sure there's no air trapped in there. And, um, and then just push them back on each side. You really want those cylinders pushing as far as you can. Just take it nice, easy, and gentle. Sometimes you can push them with your hands, sometimes just use a screwdriver. Like I said, I'll do that with the old pads. This way, if I, if I scar up the pads, I'm not worried about it because they're old, right? Okay, so what we're looking at here is how are we gonna connect this, the Suzuki connect, connector to the Brembo light micro uh, switch for the brakes, okay? So, so, so the Suzuki micro switch, you know, comes is that one right there. Okay. And if I can get this on its side, which right now, there it goes. All right. Okay. So what you're going to, there's a lot of ways you can do this, guys. I'm just showing you one way to do it. There's tons of ways that you can make these connections and different ways you can go about it. Okay. So what I did is went to the local store 
and got terminal uninsulated male 1.87 inch tab. See him? Yeah, Gibson's. There's a store right here called Gibson's. Okay. But you get. I got 16 to 14 gauge for the wire connection. That means, you know, this end of it where the wires could actually connect is basically 16 gauge wire. But the important part is that that terminal connector is the same size as the Suzuki micro switch. Okay, and it is. Okay, so we know that this terminal will plug into the female Suzuki uh, wire to, for the brakes, right? And then Brembo has what we call bullet. So Suzuki's using terminal and Brembo's using bullet. Okay, for the bullet, um, let's see. We want this one right here. Okay. Bullet. Female bullet. 157 inch tab. Again, 14 to 16 gauge. The wire on this end is going to be 16 gauge. There's some wire I picked up at the store too. 16 gauge wire, okay. Tiny little stuff. So I walked over to the bike, made sure that this female bullet fits the Brembo bullet. Brake, brake line coming off the Brembo master cylinder, and it does. Okay, so now I know I got the right connectors. So all I'm gonna do is 16 gauge to 16 gauge with some wire, right? Got my solder and iron, okay. Got some old solder laying around. Okay, just a short wire, solder these two together, that's it. Okay, there you go, guys. Brembo, I mean Brembo to Suzuki connector. Okay, after you solder the wire, I just took took some 16 gauge wire, right? I just cut a little strip about that long and bared it completely, bare wire. Stuck it in one end, curled it through, curled it through the other side, soldered one end, soldered the other end to the connectors. Okay, take some heat shrink, 3 sixteenths of an inch or almost five millimeter, I guess. In this case, it'll slide over both connectors after they're already soldered. And then you know what guys, I just took an iron and touched it along there and it shrunk right up. Okay, now you got yourself from Brembo to Suzuki. That's one. Okay, I gotta do another one. So just two wires. And that's it. They would just connect them up, be ready to go. Okay, well, there you go, guys. There's the connection right there. This is the Suzuki wire uh, brake wire harness. Right? And this one over here. If I can get this camera to focus instead of jerking me around here. Okay, and this one over here is the uh, Brembo. Okay, back here is the bullet connections. The wires I did on the bench on the uh, bench I showed you on the workbench when I wired them up. So bullet connections over here, the terminal connections over here, right? Shrink wrap that and a little bit of black tape too, just to make sure that there's no problems with the connections. And bingo. A little bit of extra wire. You could, if you're gonna, if you want to cut it really short, have it all really, really short. Then you're gonna want to do that before you put your master cylinder on the bike. Okay, I already put the master cylinder bike. I really like the fit. Didn't want to take it off. So for the extra wire that's from the Brembo master cylinder, I just made it into a nice tight little coil. Okay, nice tight little coil. Wound up in a nice little circle and just used a couple zip ties. All right, a couple zip ties. It. That's it. All right. I ran a little zip tie right here. Right there. A little zip tie right there. That's just holding this wire harness from flopping around. It's just on there loose. Okay, guys, you just slide the brake caliper back on there. Right, you saw in the previous uh, scene that I had the brake caliper just laying right here with the new pads put in. You just slide it back over the, okay, over the rotor. 
okay? And just put your bolts back in there. Let's see if I get the camera to work nice with me here. Give me a moment. Right? Just put your bolts back in. One there, one down there. Right? And in the US, we tighten these down to 29 pound feet. So just grab your favorite search engine and convert it to a Newton meters for those that are using the metric system. I, I don't remember what it is, but it's in the manual for new, Newton meters too. I just, you know. So 29 pound feet, we're gonna torque it down. So we get our, we're just gonna get my torque wrench out and, and uh, torque them down. Okay, you can see I got my torque wrench out. I already set it to 29 pound feet here. That says 30 on the left, 40, 30, but we're at 29. That's why that's why this this horizontal line here is almost up to 30. Follow me, because we're at 29. So you you turn the handle. Okay, you pull this sleeve back, and you turn the handle to the right until you get the torque wrench up to where you want it. So if I were to turn it one more turn to the right, I'd be at 30. If I turn it back to the left, I'm at 29. You follow me? Okay, and I got the socket on the end, and then we just put it on there, on that one, and up there. And when you push down, it'll make a little click, click noise, and you'll know that you're at your, that you're at your right uh, uh, torque spec. Okay, some of you may be asking, well, how do I take the brake pads out? Okay, so let's just go over the order real quick again. You already did the other side, so now this is the clutch side, and you know, let's just go over the order really quick. First thing you're gonna do is drain your brake lines completely. You already saw that earlier in the video, or it might have even been the last video. I don't remember. I think it's earlier in this video. If it, just completely drain your bleed off all your brake fluid in the brake line. Okay, do that first before you do any of this. Okay, once you get that done, you're going to, you notice the bolt goes right in here, right? And then it goes into this hole here. Okay. See them right there, the two holes, two mounting holes. So these bolts go through the brake caliper, and they go through the, they mount into these holes right here. One here. And one right there okay so take the bottom one off first and then take the butt top one out last okay then you slide this entire brake caliper off the rotor you just grab it right you just grab it and slide it off there nice and gentle and you see i got it on top of here okay so that's what you're going to do do that in order drain your brake fluid then take your brake caliper bolts out okay how do you get these brake pads out some people don't know they've never done this before so we're going to show you very simple Already took one out, you see it laying right there, right? So watch this, guys. This is on the 2017 through 2019 Suzuki GSX-R 1000 and 1000R and the ABS are all the same. This is the bottom, this is the top. So right here on the bottom, I'm gonna put my thumb right there and I'm gonna push that way. Okay, I'm gonna push that way towards the inside. Okay, first what I did is when the other brake pad was in there, I took a screwdriver. Remember, all the brake fluid's out of the brake lines at this point and I push back the brake pads like that. Why? Because we want these cylinders pushed back into the brake caliper. So you jump while the old pads are still in, don't do it with the bare. You don't want to ruin the, the cylinder wall. With both pads still in, you stick your screwdriver in there nice and gentle and press back on both sides until these cylinders, okay, are pressed pretty much all the way in. That's really important, do that first. Okay, now to take the brake pad out, you put your thumb in there and you push towards the middle, watch. That's it. See that? You just push it towards the middle. Now I got a camera in my hand, so normally I'd be two-handing this and grabbing it and stuff, but okay. So Alright. Let me get back in there a little bit. Trying to be nice and gentle because I'm doing this with one hand instead of two. Okay, there it is. It popped out. The top. You can see it's it's and then the little groove at the top, a little groove in the bottom. Now now it should slide out. Let's see. It just slides right out, see? That's how I do it. Very simple. Normally you wouldn't have to stick a screwdriver in there. It's just because I'm holding the camera, right? All right, you can see I already have a new brake caliper. I mean, sorry, brake pad put into the brake caliper, right? Simple stuff. Same way we just took these out. Okay. I already talked about this before, so I'm just going to go over this real quick. Obviously you want the brake abrasive pad, part of the pad, facing inside towards the other one, right? You're not going to put it in like this. Okay, don't do that. Like that. The two thongs face inside. Okay. And it's really hard to, kind of hard to do with holding the camera, so I'm not sure I'm going to be able to pull this off. But basically, like I said last time, I usually put the top into a little groove at the top. You'll see it 
you can't really see it here because of the light, but there's a groove up there. Okay, there's one on this side too. So I'm just gonna try to fit it up in there. Looks like we got it. Okay, this side's gonna be a little bit harder because the other pads are already in, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Okay, let's see. And then once I put a little pressure on the bottom here and hold it and push up. Let's see if I can do it one-handed. It's a little hard to do one-handed here. With everything I kind of push in and up. I can't do it. Well, there it goes. Okay. You just kind of push back in a little bit and hold up pressure at the same time. And that's it. Okay. I normally wouldn't do this with a screwdriver. I don't even want to touch it because I don't want to scar up these brake pads in any way whatsoever. Okay. Normally I just stick my hand in there, kind of gentle-like, and push it back. If you have to put a screwdriver in there, be really gentle. You don't want to be marking up these pads. And the first couple hundred miles, guys, you don't want to be braking too hard. Just kind of wear the pads in because, I mean, I mean, if you're, if you got racing pads, it's a little bit different. But for street pads, you know, you got to be a little careful because you don't want them to gloss over. They can get a little glossy. You don't want them to gloss or lose their braking power. Okay. So, okay, at this point, you can see there's a little bit of gap there. So this is probably almost fully bedded in, but the back is kind of pointing out. So anyway, off camera, I'll just make sure this this pad's fully pressed up in there, and then we're gonna we'll I'll show you how to put it back on the brake calipers. On this bike, it's super easy. And some of the older Suzuki's putting the, the brake caliper back on was a pain in the butt, but on this bike, it's really easy. Okay, at this point, guys, the brake pads are in there. They're all buttoned up, pushed up against the the cylinders and the edge of the wall is really good on both sides. You can see I got one of the bolts sitting here ready to roll. Okay, I wouldn't normally do this one handed. We're gonna see if we can pull it off. Okay, there's your rotor. You're just trying to fit this gap over that thickness of the rotor and i got a bolt right here okay, like i said normally i wouldn't do this one-handed i may have to go off camera but let's just see if we can get it on there one-handed okay all right let's see what we got here you just take a peek sorry it's hard to do all this one-handed here okay and is it gonna fit over look at that guys fit right over see that's sliding right over it just sliding right over. Look at that. I know the light's a little bit off here, but okay. Then you're just going to line up the holes on the back side here with the holes on the brake caliper. I mean, on the uh, um, that second half of the of the mount for the brakes. Okay. And that's it. You just line them up, line up the holes, and then put your bolt in. Okay. That's it. That's how simple that is. Okay. You can see a little bit better light now, right? That's it. That's how simple that is. You, then you know, normally before I even get the first one all, all the way in, I'll line up the second one too. You may have to wiggle the brake caliber around a little bit. See, I'm just kind of moving around a little. You're just doing that to get the bolt started, right? Let's see. Is it going in? Yeah, it's going in. Okay. That's it. And then if I can find the uh, end of the socket, here it is. Normally from that point, I just grab the end of the socket, I put it on there and just turn it by hand. Just get it all the way down there, just not even snug, but just to the surface. And then do the same thing on the bottom. Okay. And then the top again. I usually snug up the top just a little bit and then just keep going back and forth until they're kind of hand tight. And then at this point, I'm gonna grab the torque wrench Sometimes I give it just a little shake to see what we got going on, nice and firm. At this point, I'm going to put this on the end of the torque wrench and torque these down to 29 pound-feet for U.S. Uh, torque specs. Okay, guys, here we go. Just like last time on the other side, I got the torque wrench here. I'm set at 29 pound-feet, and uh, we're just going to stick it on the bolt here. And... I'm not going to go all the way to 29 on the first, the first um, pass on the top because we want to really want to torque these together approximately the same. We don't want to over tighten one side more than the other. Um, it's kind of a kind of a cross pattern technique you use as a mechanic. You really want to keep bring them up to torque together. You hear that? You hear it? That's it. That little clicking noise means we're at 29. We're at our spec. We're not going to go any higher. Now the bottom. See? See the handle? Watch. 
the handle gives, right? It's not torquing over here anymore. It's not turning. The handle, that means we're at, we're at spec. So that's on there at spec. So before we go any further, we want to take a look at our, this is where I had all the, the little uh, parts and fasteners. I put in a little measuring cup when I was taking all the parts off the bike, get ready to do this installation, right? So before we go any further and start bleeding the, bleeding the brake lines, we want to empty this bucket out, this little cup out, and look at all the little fasteners and see what needs to go back on the bike, what's been replaced by other kits like the Brembo kit or the Gallifer brake line kit, okay? And we want to make sure that we don't forget to put any parts back on the bike, right? Okay, now all this stuff over here is a lot of brake line clips. Okay, all that's been replaced. Okay, the Galfer brake line kit. These clips are too big, they don't fit on there. Okay. This came from the Galfer kit, I didn't have to reuse it. I didn't have to use it because I, re I reused the OEM uh, brake supports, the rubber brake supports, I put them back on the bike, so I didn't need to use that. Okay, this came off the uh, the OEM master cylinder bleeder screw. Well, Brembo has its own little bleeder screw and its own little rubber cap, so I don't need that one. Okay, this came off of the uh, the two rear brake lines that went up to went to and from the um, ABS pump. Well, since I don't have lines going up the ABS pump anymore for the rear brake, I don't need to use that. Okay, this was for the front fender, which I don't I don't have the the brake line running through the top of the front fender, so I don't need to use it. Okay, so all these parts so far I don't need to put, to put back in the bike. Now I'm, I'm going to keep them, I'm not going to throw them away, but I don't need to use them, okay? All this right here goes for the front fender, four bolts total for the front fender. These two little rubber washers I'm pretty sure go with these two guys, okay? Bleeder screw, uh, rubber caps, two for the front, one on each side of the motorcycle, one for the rear brake. These two bolts bolt, put the seat back on. This goes to the brake reservoir on the front brake reservoir that holds the brake fluid. You screw that in there and it keeps the cap from, from uh, spinning off when you're riding hard, right? That's what that is. So what I don't know is what are these two and what are these two? Okay, so now it's on to bleeding the, the brake system. We're gonna start with the, um, we always start at the top, guys. We're going to bleed that master cylinder right there through its bleeder screw. Always start at the highest point of your brake system. Okay. Obviously, we need to put some brake fluid in there, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay. And I've got the the hose running up to the bleeder screw right back there. I got a little eight millimeter wrench on it, which is right here, run into the bleeder screw, okay. Right now it's closed, and this line just runs back to the little, to the little pump container. And right now we're not, we don't have the pump on because we're, we're, we're um, actually doing this manually and then we'll turn the pump on occasionally to pull some fluid through, but. So, you can see that the brake reservoir is pretty full. All right, so now we got brake fluid coming down Going into the master cylinder, the bleeder screw down here is closed. Okay, I'm just going to pump this handle until it becomes pretty firm. Meaning, the distance between here and there is pretty is pretty wide, right? The handle isn't going all the way to the handlebar, all the way to the throttle. So that's pretty good. That means I got brake fluid in there. Now what you're going to do is, you're going to hold the handle like that with your left hand. And you're going to crack open the bleeder screw and the handle is going to push to, all the way to the handlebar like that. And you'll watch down there to see if there's any bubbles coming through, okay? Now once once this handle gets all the way to the handlebar, so it's hold it like this, pump it up until you got brake fluid in there. Right, bleeder screw is closed. Pump it up until you got brake fluid coming into the master cylinder. Hold it like that. Crack open the bleeder screw, the handle's gonna go like that. When the handle gets already there, you close the bleeder screw. Okay, let go of the handle, pump it up again. Repeat the process over and over and over until there's no more air bubbles coming through this tube okay and really guys you really want to watch this tube up here close to the bleeder screw it, the, the whole entire tube may not be free of may have air in it some of it down here but you really concerned about the first foot or two coming out of there you want to make sure that there's no 
there's no bubbles in there you follow me so you can see it back there I watch the first 6 to 12 inches and make sure even 8 inches make sure there's no bubbles in that area and then I know I'm good to go for the first pass okay okay so we're back over to the for a second run through this is uh, the uh, master cylinder and we're gonna bleed from the very top of the master cylinder bleeder screw I'm gonna check so the what, what I'm showing you now it applies to both the master cylinder bleeder screw as well as both brake calipers the same exact procedure in action so I'm gonna show you up here how I, okay how it's done and you can apply it to both the front uh, calipers on both sides of the bike okay first thing you're gonna do is obviously I got the wrench on there which by the way from Brembo the 19 RCS is 11 millimeter bleeder screw a little odd that they have 11 millimeter sides but that's what they have okay I got the uh, bleeder hose on there on the uh, bleeder screw and the first thing I'm gonna do guys check to see what kind of pump we got on the handle okay it's pretty good All right we got pretty good firm action here if it's not firm meaning you don't have brake fluid down into the master cylinder then this lever will go all the way to the throttle okay right now we're pretty good <clears throat> now let's see if I can set up the camera so you can see this you'll notice I got my hand on the on the brake lever right I'm pressing on it and I'm gonna hold it there I'm not gonna let go I'm gonna hold it I got pressure on I'm maintaining pressure okay now while I'm maintaining pressure I'm gonna I'm gonna take the wrench okay and I'm gonna open up the bleeder screw by turning the wrench just a little bit this way right towards the camera I'm just going to open up enough to let some brake fluid flow. As soon as the handle goes to the grip, I'm going to close the bleeder screw. Let's see what happens here. So I'm holding the, holding the handle firm, open up the bleeder screw just a little bit, and there goes some brake fluid. As soon as it comes through, I'll close it. Okay. Now the handle is not all the way to the... Right now, it's almost all the way to the grip, but not quite. Okay, so I'm going to pump it up a little bit, get some brake fluid again running down into the master cylinder. Now it's much firmer. I can feel the brake fluid coming in there nice and firm. Now I'm going to just repeat the process. I'm going to hold it nice and firm and just crack the bleeder screw just a little bit. Brake fluid should flow. And there it goes. There's no bubbles at all right there. Okay, so we're going to do it one more time. Pump up the brake handle. Nice and firm. Feels pretty good right here. And I'm going to crack open the bleeder screw while maintaining pressure. You could, hopefully you can see in the camera that this handle is going to move towards the throttle. There it goes. Here comes the brake fluid. No bubbles at all right there. See, no bubbles. That's what you want. Okay. So I feel pretty confident right now that the air has been cleared out of the master cylinder. I'm going to pump it up one more time. Nice and firm here. And I'm going to tighten this screw up for the last time because I'm done bleeding the master cylinder here. So I'm going to give it a good little snug tight. Not over tight, but just snug. And that's it. Now there's a little bit of brake fluid in this line down here that you can't see. So what I normally do is, let me take the camera off the stand. What I normally do at this point is I'll turn the, the pump on just to pull that last little brake fluid out of there down into the container. Okay. Now some of you may say, why don't you just have the pump on all the time? You could do that. You could leave the pump on. Okay. But you're still going to have to pump this handle. Because you gotta let you got to let brake fluid pump through. Okay. And I don't like the, the flow rate. The vacuum pulls pretty aggressively. The vacuum's really good for clearing out the brake system. But I don't necessarily use it to bleed it. Because it's a little too aggressive. It'll pull a little too hard. Follow me. But you guys can try it if you want. I personally didn't like it. I like it for draining the whole system really quick. It's very convenient. But when I go to bleed and I want more finite, finite control, I prefer to do it old school. Okay. Okay, so I've topped off the brake fluid in the, the uh, front brake reservoir to the upper line remember don't go all the way up just follow make sure you don't go above that upper line because brake fluid will expand and contract a little bit depending on what's going on okay so just go to the upper line which on this one is about right there okay so next what I'm gonna do is we're gonna put the 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 sealer back on okay Okay. Put it right in there, nice and careful. I do a little check, make sure it's clean. Off camera, looks really good. I don't see any specs or anything on there. Okay. A little wipe, just to get off some old brake fluid would be good, which I already did. Okay. Push it right in there like that. Remember, this is the stock Suzuki brake reservoir, and 
to be honest with you, I'm glad I could reuse it because, like I said, it mounted perfectly right back where it came from on the handlebar. Okay, at this point, we're going to put the cap back on. Okay. We know we got our front brake system completely bled. Okay. Snug that puppy up a little bit. Okay. And from our, our little cup of goodies, we want to make sure we don't forget to put this bracket back on the master cylinder. I mean, the uh, brake reservoir. This keeps the cap from spinning off. Boy, I got to tell you guys, it is a good feeling. <laughs> That I know I got the front brake system completely installed, stainless steel braided brake lines. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Got the Galfor stainless steel braided brake lines GP style. Okay, new brake pads. Come on, who can who can not like Brembo brake calipers? Coming as OEM equipment, I love it. Okay, got the Brembo Master Cylinder 19 RCS on there, sweet, all blood out, you can see I put the little bleeder screw rubber cap back on there, same thing for front, both front calipers, make sure you put your little bleeder screw cap back on there, you don't want dust getting in there when you're riding around. I got the brake reservoir for the front brakes filled up and got the little bracket on there to keep the cap from spinning off nice and tight okay we're moving on to the rear brakes now I remember those two long bolts in the in the bucket I wasn't sure where they went <laughs> well good thing I remember they go back to holding the gas tank down <laughs> that's the only two two bolts I couldn't remember where they went I had forgotten I had taken the taken these out to lift up the gas tank to see where the brake lines were going I mean I would have figured it out pretty quick going down the road the gas tank kind of wobbling around I'd be like all right that's where those two bolts go. Okay, seat goes on. Little hooks right there, little white little hooks, little horns. Hook right into those little spots right there, one right there, and one right there. And what you do with this one, guys, is you hold the front of the seat high, like that, and you just line up the little hooks with those little black hooks and slide it right in there and then just press down on the seat and that's it and then you'll notice that this bad boy goes in that hole and then thing on the other same thing on the other side one more thing i wanted to show you guys the, the bike's been buttoned all up it's all been uh reinstalled put back together everything's ready to go i'm about to get ready to go for a ride but uh, one thing I didn't show is I put this this uh, plastic plate back underneath there. Now, if you'll remember that right there, okay, that's where the brake the ABS brake line came out. Remember? Okay. Now I'm probably gonna take that tape off there now and just put a little rubber cap over it. Um, there's no brake fluid in there, but any little residual brake fluid, I probably just put a little rubber cap over. But what I really wanted to show you is, you see those two bolts, one right there and one right there. So those bolts. Are 10 millimeter and that's what you're gonna put the plastic plate back in there okay but you notice this brake line there's a hole right in the plastic plate right so Suzuki knows that people are gonna put in racing brake lines so they give you this cutout right here guys nice right be able to get a spot yeah I think you can see it you guys see this little there's a little cutout right here this little cutout right here that's where you put your brake line now you'll notice mine isn't there right now it's underneath this right here so it really should go right here okay so I already tried it and put it over there and it fits in there perfectly Suzuki knows what they're doing guys they put that little notch there for a reason okay that's for GP style brake lines they're gonna go right through this notch now my problem was when I turned you always check your your wheel left to right guys so turn your wheel all the way one way and all the way the other way all the way to full lock and while you're doing it look underneath to make sure you're not binding up your brake lines or pulling on any traction control lines or whatever okay so when I did that it was pretty good 95% of the way but when it got way over here it was, it was digging in a little bit of this plastic right here okay so two things I could do here I could cut away take this back off just cut a little bit out right here so the brake line doesn't rub up against it 
or I can leave it where it's at right now where it doesn't rub at all. So for now, I think I'm just going to leave it right there. I, really, I don't really feel like cutting this out a little bit, so I'm just going to leave it. So right now, if I turn the wheel all the way to one, one side, okay, you can see that nothing's binding up. This brake line has still got a little bit of, little bit of flexibility in it, so we're good there. Okay, and if we go back to all the way the other way, you can see that that brake line over there is not being caught up by the plastic, right? So we're good. This is this is good. This is what we want. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that when you put this back in, make sure you route your. It's pretty easy. You'll see that it fits right over that real easy. Okay. And then you'll have to make a decision over there. Every bike just a little bit different about how you're going to route that the brake line on the uh, clutch side of the bike. talking about well guys i hope you enjoyed that video finally got it all done you know what guys a lot went into this upgrade it took uh quite a, t a while to get it done because i'm pretty much doing all that in my spare time but i'm happy to bring you guys that content so you can see that you can indeed upgrade and remove the abs on this motorcycle if that's what you want to do you know what guys a lot of racing going on this week here in america we got moto america going on at vir i'm pretty sure bsb's racing this weekend MotoGP is racing this weekend. I think Austrian Superbike is racing this weekend. And maybe World Superbike is even racing. I didn't check the calendar. I think we got four or five different uh, major races going on this weekend. So my, it's like just, a, I don't know if I'm going to be able to watch all of it. It's going to take me like three or four days to watch all the content, right? But I love it. I love motorcycle racing, as you guys can tell. Listen, guys, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and click that Texas flag right here. Over my head, you'll see a video of all the uh, videos on this awesome 2017 Suzuki GSX-R 1000R. And right here, guys, you're going to see uh, two free movies. If you haven't watched it, go over there and watch it. And until next time, guys, we'll see you right back here again real soon.